Welcome to our galaxy, the Milky Way. Let's go and find our planet Earth. And here comes Earth. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to discover what is hiding behind this beautiful Milky Way cloud and specifically look for the largest star in our galaxy. So somewhere behind all of this, there hides a very, very large star called UY Skotai. We're going to approach it very slowly just so we can actually see the size of this beautiful and very unusual looking star. And welcome to What The Math. So let's talk a little bit more about UY Skutai. <laughs> And welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. We're actually going to be taking a look at this star in this game and also maybe possibly create some sort of a interesting solar system around it. So let's go into the first simulation, which I wanted to take a look at here. And right under other tests right here, you'll notice there is one called Scale Tour. So let's actually go in here just so we can actually check this out. And as you probably guessed, this is where you get to compare the size of different objects. So right here we have Earth, which is super hot because it's surrounded by all of these other stars that you'll see in a second. Then we have Saturn uh, and Jupiter. And then we have a star called Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to our solar system. Then we have the Sun. So this is the Sun, so just keep this in mind. This is what it looks like. And now, in a second, I'm going to turn around and show you what's behind me. Right here, right next to the Sun, we have obviously Sirius and and then another star called Arcturus. So Arcturus is a much larger star than the Sun, but not as large as the star behind it, which of course is Rigel and Betelgeuse. So Betelgeuse is a massive star in comparison to the Sun, which is right there. It's a tiny dot you see right here. And Betelgeuse is still not the largest star either. There is one behind it called VY Canis Majoris, uh, the star that about which we'll talk in one of the future videos. And yet, this is still not the largest star because the largest star that we do have is UI Skutai, red luminous supergiant that is going to be placed right next to them. So it's a little bit larger than Canis Majoris and it's also about 1.7 times larger than Betelgeuse. And it has a volume that's about 5 billion times larger than the sun. So if I were to place it, I don't even know where the sun is anymore. If I were to place it here, it would cover everything. As a matter of fact, if I were to go back to the solar system and try to place it here, take a wild guess how big it's going to be. Just take a wild guess. If you want, you can post it in the comments below. It is going to be so large that it will cover everything. It will cover everything. It will cover Jupiter. It will most likely even cover Saturn because we're actually not even sure how big it is because it's so far away from us that we cannot really see its true size. But if I were to place it right in the middle, boom, look at that. There is our solar system with UY Skutai in the middle that has just literally absorbed everything and caused a supernova, of course, because it has swollen the sun and the sun caused its explosion. It made the UY Skutai too unstable. And here's actually a scale for a comparison. So you can see that this is this right here is 6.68 astronomical units. And uh, the radius of UI Skutai is is larger than that. And it's actually over seven astronomical units or possibly even larger because it's so far away from us. And we're talking about 9,500 light years away that we're not even sure how big it actually is. In comparison to the sun, that's, I think I'm going to uh, put an orbit around UI Skutai. It's about 340,000 times brighter, which is, I think it's, I think it's pretty bright, right? And so here is our sun right here. We're going to zoom in on it and it looks ridiculously tiny in comparison. Look at how small it is. And this is quite a sight, actually. It makes you feel really small. If you, if you imagine Earth, if we actually place Earth in here as well, and then zoom in on Earth, and it's already molten, actually. But you can kind of see the outlines of the continents. So you are a little speck somewhere on this planet in comparison to the sun and in comparison to the huge giant behind you. So imagine how small we are in comparison to this. And the interesting thing about UI Skutai and the reason why we're actually not sure how big it is, is that it's actually called a variable star. In other words, it actually changes its luminosity every once in a while, specifically every 740 days. So its luminosity is different because of that it has these two letters in front of its name. So the UY part is because it doesn't actually have a classification that I've talked about in one of the previous videos. So normally stars have a classification anywhere from A to 
letter Q and uh, variable stars don't have that because they change their luminosity and they change their size or any other variable and, and so and so because of that, uh, many stars in our uh, galaxy, in our universe will have letters in front of them because, because stars that don't actually have a classification often have just letters in front of them based on when they were found. And so because this is a variable star, it will actually change its luminosity that will go up and down, up and down. And we're not really sure what uh, causes this, but it might be because the star actually shrinks in size and then becomes bigger again. So just like what I showed you in Space Engine where it was actually not really spherical, but it had different sort of shape. This is obviously because of its massive size. And it's so bright and so massive that you can even see it with binoculars on a really dark night. And it's actually very close to um, a really beautiful nebula called Eagle Nebula. So if you look into the sky and you find Eagle Nebula with your telescope or binoculars, and then look a little bit to the northwest, you'll actually see the UI Skotai as well. And from a distance, this actually looks like a very reddish star with a slight smudge along the stars of the Milky Way. Now, we're actually going to try to build some sort of a solar system around this. But before we do, let's actually just look at the size again and compare it. So here, um, there's a really good comparison on Wikipedia that gives you an idea of how small Earth is in comparison to UI Skutai. So if Earth were the size of a soccer ball, so if Earth was just a soccer ball, then the sun would be about 22 meters or 73 feet in diameter, which is about the uh, size of a seven-story high building. And in, in that comparison, UI Skutai would be about 38 kilometers or 125,000 feet, which is basically four times higher than Mount Everest. So imagine if Earth was a bowl and you dropped it from four times the height of Mount Everest. This is how small Earth would be in comparison to this huge giant. Alright, so what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to place a, a terrestrial planet somewhere around it so that it's, it's actually in the habitable zone so we can then terraform it. So let's see how far away the habitable zone is for this star and we're going to do this the smart way by looking at the habitable zone tab right here and turning it on. Here we go. Okay, so whoa, alright, so that is really far away. The habitable zone for UI Skotai is in a distance of, let's see how far this is. Whoa, okay, anywhere between 700 and 1300 astronomical units. That is so far away. Uh, this is actually 10 times more far away than the farthest object that we currently know in our solar system. And it's also about one hundredth of a light year, so that means that the light from UI Skotai will actually take about anywhere between 30 to 40 days to reach this area, if my calculations are correct. And so this is basically where we can actually have a terrestrial planet with life on it. So let's do that. Let's go in here and place a random rocky planet. This is going to be our base of operation. And let's name it Scutinia, because this is UI Scutai, so it has to have a similar named planet. I don't know why I did that, but why not? And this is what Scutinia looks like, kind of looks like Mars, I guess, it's just a little bit more brown and a little bit more uh, unfriendly to life. So let's make it more friendly to life. It's about 1.1 masses of Earth. We're going to change the materials so it's a, it has a little bit less iron and also give it a little bit of water and a little bit of organics as well. We're also going to give it one atmosphere of atmosphere. And there we go. So that's a start. Uh, now we want to give it a rotation as well, because I'm not sure if it's rotating. Are you rotating planet or are you just standing still? Okay, it's rotating really slowly. Let's give it a one day rotation. We want it to have a one day rotation. And it looks like it's still a little bit too cold in here. So let's see what's going on. All right, looks like we just have to wait because its temperature is increasing. Its greenhouse effect is 73 degrees Celsius. So I think if I just wait, it will actually warm up. And it looks like this stable temperature is approximately 16 degrees Celsius. So if I look at the uh, temperature curve here, there we go. It's sort of stabilizing at around 16 degrees Celsius, which is going to be its average temperature. In other words, it's very, very similar to Earth, maybe about a degree warmer than Earth. And so we're going to have liquid oceans here. We're going to have really beautiful brown fields of iron and other metals. And of course, uh, Earth-like clouds. Now let's see how similar it is to Earth currently, and it's currently 98% similar to Earth with about 67% chance of life. Awesome, this is great news for everyone, we might actually have life here. 
Now, if you were to look into the sky, the size of UY Skutai would be just a little bit bigger than the size of the sun, but it would not be as luminous and as bright. So if I stand on the surface right now and then I try to look into the sky, I will see a somewhat dim red ball in the sky, but it's not going to be as bright as the sun. And the interesting question here is, you know, how long would it actually take for this to orbit around UI Skutai? In other words, how long is the year on this planet? Because, you know, we want to know, we want to have seasons. We want to know how long is the winter, how long is the summer, how long is the spring? And let's find out how long this is. And because the distance to the star is 923 astronomical units, it will take us 9,612 years to orbit it once. Uh, yep, one year here is 9,612 years. In other words, one season would be close to 2,500 years. Imagine having 2,500 years of winter. That's what it would be like if this planet had a little bit of a tilt like it does right here. And also if it was orbiting around UI Skutai. And it's for, for all we know, there might be actually planets orbiting around it at this distance. But this is not a place where I would want to live because I don't think I can survive so much winter. As a matter of fact, imagine having generations of people being born on this planet where they actually have to live in the winter for over 2000 years and then live in the summer for over 2000 years. Uh, so the entire culture and the entire history here would be so much different than on our planet because here people would only know winter for, for many years and then they would only know summer for many years. Now let's actually accelerate time and see if we can make it orbit at least once. I don't think I can actually accelerate it fast enough uh, for my computer to handle for it to orbit around this star once. Okay, we can kind of see the motion at least. Now this is 13 years per second. Let's see if we can go faster. Okay, there we go. 100 years per second. I'm going to zoom out and look at it from a distance. And there we go. So we have thousands of years passing as this... Uh, Scutinia planet orbits around UI Scutai, its uh, lovely giant star. Alright, and before we finish this video, let's actually end the simulation by placing a few more of these massive super giants and see what happens. And I think we know what's going to happen, but let's just see anyway. So the other star we're going to place that we're going to talk in one of the future videos is of course Antares. Antares is a little bit smaller and it's going to go, I'm going to make it binary, it's going to go right here. Then we're going to place another star called VY Canis Majoris. And VY is because this is also a variable star. And it's a little bit smaller than uh, UI Scutai, but not much smaller. And lastly, let's place our favorite star, Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse will go somewhere in between them, maybe over here. All right, so now we're going to accelerate time and see what happens. I have a feeling uh, there's going to be a bit of an explosion in going on. But let's see, maybe maybe for all we know, we might have actually accidentally created a very stable quadruple system. Even though it's probably very unlikely to happen. So here they go flying around and dancing around each other. And as they come closer to each other, they will probably go uh, on their merry ways and possibly even collapse into each other. And, uh, and is there going to be a supernova or what? There we go. There we go. First supernova. Uh, and this is the end of this uh, particular solar system because they have just collapsed into each other. But the uh, the other two stars seem to have uh, actually formed a very stable binary system and are now escaping the solar system forever. Uh, so we have two massive superstars, uh, Canis Majoris and, uh, and Betelgeuse, uh, and then we have our beautiful UI Skutai remnant, which is only uh, now uh, 1.17 masses of the sun. And Scutinia, what has happened to you? You are actually still have a really good temperature, which is in really interesting. The temperature here is about 30 degrees Celsius, but it, it is increasing because we have these two stars passing by. And for all we know, it might actually get into orbit around them. Is it going to get into orbit around them? No, it's not. Or maybe it has a acquired orbit. This is beautiful. Look at that. And the temperature actually is comfortable. This was all very accidental, but I think I've created a binary supermassive giant star system with Scutinia. No, it suddenly got hot and lost all its water. Yep, it suddenly got very hot and lost all of its water because I think it got a little bit too close to these two supermassive giants. Anyway, so that's it for UI Scutai. 
Unfortunately, we ended up destroying it, and this is actually what's going to happen to it in the future. Because currently, UI Skutai is actually fusing helium, and if you don't know what that means, uh, watch one of the previous videos where I talked about solar evolution, specifically evolution of our sun. And so once it stops fusing helium, it's going to start fusing lithium, carbon, oxygen, neon, and silicon, and over the next million years, it will most likely reach the stage where it starts producing iron, and that's when it will have a really, really fast collapse of its core. And once its core collapses, it's going to either become a yellow hypergiant, or possibly some sort of a blue variable star, or a wolf riot star, which is yet another concept we'll talk about in one of the future videos. And if it does become that, following the supernova it will then create more little stars like our sun anyway thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did please subscribe check out some of the other universe sandbox 2 videos and share this video with your friends and your loved ones that's right go and show it to your girlfriend or your boyfriend and make them talk about your favorite topic astronomy stars and universe and everything else and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to this channel because there's going to be a lot more Universe Sandbox 2 videos coming in the future. Now let's zoom out of here and look at our beautiful supernova from a distance. And look at this glorious, beautiful sight. And I just realized there's actually another star. Antares Nova Remnant is actually flying away from us at a speed of 216,000 kilometers per second, which is actually very close to the speed of light. Now let's actually fly away with it. And as we fly away, Remember that moment when you felt really small and realized that even our sun is so tiny in comparison to some of the other stars in this universe. Thank you for watching everyone and bye bye.